happen to you if you're young at heart? For it's hard you will find to be narrow of mind. Okay, Jeff, you're going to have to help me on that. That's, uh, what's it? Yeah, uh, what's uh, Jimmy Durante. What, what's the connection between Jimmy Durante and my condition? Okay, so that, that, that's, my, that's Jeff Reed. He's my audio guy, co-producer. And I ask him, look, what's the connection between Jimmy Durante? We've been playing Louis Armstrong. I get it. We've been playing Clarence Frogman Henry. That was my idea. All of a sudden, he throws Jimmy Durante at me. And, oh, young at heart, the young at heart part. Ah, so I'm young at heart. Or I should be young at heart. Okay, got it. Okay, there we go. I still have no idea what the connection is between that and the condition of my throat. But Jeff says there is a connection there. I'm going to trust him as a distinguished member of the Focal Point broadcast team. Uh, By the way, uh, article coming out by Gallup saying that the distrust of the media on the part of the American people is at a historic high, 60% of the American people have little or no trust in the mass media. And ladies and gentlemen, that's why you listen to Focal Point and why you listen to AFR Talk. You are one of the 60%. You have no trust in what I call the mean stream media. <clears throat> and this has, this trust on the part of the American people in the media has been on a steady decline Since 1998, in 1998, 53% of the American people had some level of trust in the mainstream media. That's dipped below water and is continuing to slide to where in 2012, only 40% of the American people have any trust in the media. And another uh, thing that came out in the Gallup story is that Republicans are following presidential politics more closely than Democrats, 48 to 39 And it's sort of been my observation, that's not original with me by any stretch, but I don't know how to, to, uh, (coughs) excuse me, how to put this exactly, but um, if you are a conservative, if we're conservatives, we have to do our homework. We have to pay attention. We've got to do research. We've got to read. We have to have our facts straight. We've got to be able to defend and support and substantiate what we say. But liberals don't. All liberals have to do is just feel because what justifies in their own minds their positions on public policy issues is purely and simply a matter of feeling. It's entirely subjective. If they feel strongly enough about something, their feelings in their mind are all they need to validate the truth of the whatever perspective or stance that they have taken. But conservatives, not that way, we've got to do uh, we got to do our homework. So, it's interesting that Gallup kind of um, confirms that be, that that liberals are are paying less attention to presidential politics than Republicans because they they don't need to. I mean, they don't need to because it's all about feelings, it's all about emotions, it's all about instinctive reactions. What do you need to be paying attention to if your position on everything is determined simply by the internal reaction uh, that you have? Now, let me uh, grab a couple of sound bites <clears throat> before we go back to the phones, 888-589-8840. Let's grab clip number 10, Rob, and then I want to go back to pick up four and five. But uh, Barack Obama, you know, we played the sound bites in the first hour where he said, look, on the campaign trail, I'm going to go and we're going to change the way Washington works. We're going we're gonna to make fundamental changes. And then on, on Univision yesterday, he says, no, can't do it. I've discovered you can't change Washington from the outside. Can't be done or from the inside, you got to change it from the outside. And Mitt Romney says, well, great, well, we'll give you a chance to change Washington from the outside on November 7th. Oh, that was a pretty good response. Now, here he's, he's talking to Univision, and then he got pressed pretty good by Univision on some of the failures in his first administration. And one of them is he'd made this wonderful promise about uh, immigration. And so they press him on that. How come you didn't get anything done? There's no comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, under your administration. Why is that? Here was his response. I confess I did not expect, and so I'm I'm happy to uh, take responsibility for being naive here, is that Republicans who had previously supported comprehensive immigration reform, my opponent in 2008, who had been a champion of it, and who attended these meetings, suddenly would walk away. 
That's what I did not anticipate. So there's Barack Obama. You know, he just admitted he's naive. Did you hear that? He says, I was naive. So here you have a president who in twice in this Univision interview, first of all, he admits he's a failure by his own standard. Did you elect me? I'll go change the way Washington works. Now he's saying I can't be done from the inside. So he's admitted he's, his first four years a total failure. And then he's admitting that he's naive. So he's a, he's a naive failure by his own admission. Now let's go back to soundbite number four. And again, when you catch these liberals, when they're not thinking about it, they will tell you what they really believe about Islam. And by the way, the Pakistani government, you know what they had to do? Today is Love the Prophet Day. Today in Pakistan is all about love. It's all about love and Muhammad. This is the Islam version of love. 17 people are dead. Two movie theaters have been torched. There are riot police out everywhere, and things got so bad that the government of Pakistan actually terminated cell phone service in 15 different cities For one simple reason, to keep Muslims from using cell phones to detonate bombs. So the Pakistani government clearly indicating that they know that Islam is not, in fact, a religion of peace. Now listen to this clip from Barack Obama, and you'll hear him admit that he knows he's admitting it here and doesn't even realize he's doing it. Listen to the word he uses to describe these violent protests across the world. 33 people now are dead in these, these violent reactions to America. And there's not about that movie. We've been over that. We know these attacks are pre-planned. I mean, they had rocket-propelled grenades. They have machine guns. They came in well-coordinated waves in the Libyan attack. This was not some kind of spontaneous. There were no protests in Libya at all. We got eyewitnesses, CBS News. No, no protests going on at all. So this was clearly a pre-planned military type assault. And listen to the word that Barack Obama uses when he talks about these protests in which he admits that he knows that Islam is not a religion of peace. Let's listen. We're we're still doing an investigation uh, and there are going to be different circumstances in different countries. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to speak to something until we have all the information. What we do know is that uh, the natural... Uh, protests that uh, arose because of the outrage over the video uh, were used as an excuse by extremists uh, to see if they can also directly harm U.S. interests. So did you hear him use the word natural? That's the thing that struck me. What we do know is that the natural protests that arose over the outrage, 33 people are dead. And Barack Obama is saying that's natural. That's normal. What would you expect? And he doesn't even realize what he's saying. You know, he's basically, this this is what you ought to expect out of Islam. 33 people dead, riots everywhere, embassies burned, consulates torched. This is the natural way that Muslims around the world uh, react when they feel their feelings have been hurt. Here's clip number five. This is Ben LeBolt of the Obama campaign on Fox News. And they're asking, look, when is... President Obama is on with Brett Bayer, or I think Neil Cavuto. When is President Obama going to come out and tell us what happened in Libya? And and part of the problem is Barack Obama doesn't even know what's going on. He was out there telling Univision this was not a terrorist attack, and his own people were saying earlier in the day it is a terrorist attack. We now know that. So the administration on a completely different wavelength on whether that was a terrorist attack or not. Obama says no. His own people are saying yes. And so Ben LeBolt's asked by Neil Cavuto, when is the Obama administration going to start talking about Libya? Because they've been stonewalling this thing, hiding behind this ruse that there's some investigation going on. Let's listen. Well, again, the director of the National Counterterrorism Center yesterday, a career national security official, shared with the American people uh, the information that we have about this situation. I understand that, but you uh, at know, this time, we're not I going know, to engage in, in speculation but like Governor everybody Romney, watching this uh, tends to. Everybody do. watching this knows that President Obama is the commander-in-chief. It's his job. Will he address the American people and clear up these stories? Well, uh, listen, uh, the administration testified before Congress yesterday and shared the information that we have uh, at this time. If there are significant uh, developments, of course, 
uh, the president will update the American Should people just as other administration officials then? will, uh, just as the other uh, administration officials will uh, update the American people as soon as we have any information. So that's actually Bill Hemmer, and he's just boring in on this LeBolt. He's the commander-in-chief. I'm tired of getting the runaround here. Just kept getting the runaround from Ben LeBolt. Let's grab a couple of phone calls. Let's go to Mark, Rogers, Arkansas. Uh, if we can bring Mark in from Rogers, Arkansas. Mark, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian. Afternoon. Got a great show going. I'm, I'm sorry you're not healthy. I've been praying for you while I'm on hold. So Thank you very much, sir. get better over the weekend. Thank you very much. Um... I kind of picked up the crusade that you and a lot of the folks at the AFR talk have, and that is to, you know, get online and do some research and go to rightlyconcerned.com and One News Now and, and quite a few other sites. And one of the trends I noticed a while back with, a, with President Obama is that when a crisis happens, such as this Middle Eastern thing, he tends to take advantage of it and do other things under the table while people are focusing elsewhere. And uh, through a little research, I came up with something that's going on that's not being talked about too much. Uh, it appears that the Obama administration is in the process of uh, completing something that's been on the table for a long time, and that is giving away eight islands in Alaska and the 125,000 square acres of uh, seabed that goes with them, under which there is 90 billion barrels of oil. And just like his missile defense giveaway in Eastern Europe, he's not asking for anything in return. He's just handing it over to Russia, which would also not only give them a foothold on the west coast of Alaska, but their drilling techniques for oil are really bad, and they're known for a lot of pollution. And then they could literally ruin the entire Bering Sea and then the salmon uh, uh, fisheries of the North Pacific. Yeah. Well, listen, Mark, I appreciate, appreciate the heads up on that, and we will... Uh kind of look into that I understand that there now is some credible information out there to, to support exactly what you are saying that could be going on so we'll see what we can find out about that and we do know that japan and china are locked up in a, in a conflict that could escalate over seven completely uninhabited islands nobody even lives there probably some natural resources at stake and they're at odds with each other focal point afr talk